What is up everyone? My name is Jessica. If you're stumbling upon this video here in the new year, my gosh, my gosh, my gosh, it is 20 freaking 22. Still trying to like grasp that fact. Like it's just crazy. Also, I'm dealing with some like pregnancy related congestion. So apologies if I sound nasal. I am nasal right now. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Anyway, so today we're going to dive into kind of my thoughts on this coming year and changes I want to make on uh, like both my mindset, my habits, all of that. And I just feel like the beginning of the year for me is a time when I get just this flood of that feeling of a fresh start. I don't know how else to explain it. And I know not everyone gets that feeling then, but maybe you get it later in the year at a different time. Maybe for you, like when spring hits, that's the time for you that you get that flood of feelings. It doesn't really matter when <laughs> you set goals for yourself and new goals for yourself, but kind of figuring out when is that time during the year that you feel that feeling that you want to adjust some things and really like take stock of what's going on in your life. And for me, that just happens to be when the new year rolls around. So I love sharing this with you, kind of my goals and stuff. I just did a coffee chat. I'm going to try not to get emotional in this video, okay? <laughs> I just did a coffee chat video a few weeks ago and in it I really talk about how my perspective on life is just has changed a lot lately and I want you to see that video before you watch this one because I think it'll make some of my thoughts and ideas for my goals make more sense and I'll explain some of that here too but anyway. Uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to that video because, like I said, I really am a little bit vulnerable in that and I think it's good to talk about life and to think about life in different ways and yeah. So I'll link that below if you want to watch that either now or after, whatever. So I did want to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, which is Ritual. I have been taking Ritual vitamins for four years now. My husband now takes them. I'm currently pregnant and so right now I'm taking their prenatal and I actually started taking their prenatal vitamin when we knew we wanted to start trying because ideally when you are trying to have a baby, three months before is generally like the guidelines to start taking a prenatal. So I've been taking the prenatal for quite a while now, but before this I was taking their essential for women, which I love. And again, after all of this is over, I'll be going back to the essential for women. And I just feel like as we're talking about new year's goals and revolutions, <laughs> revolutions, wow, resolutions. I just feel like this is a great time that if you're thinking about new habits to incorporate into your routine, taking a daily multivitamin is pretty important. And the way it finally clicked for me was I would put this in with my toothbrush and toothpaste. So I would see it there every single night. That's when I take my vitamins. Every single night I would see it when I'm about to brush my teeth and I'd be like, oh, okay. So I take it and now I don't think I've missed a day of taking my multivitamin in years because it's such an easy way to remember to do it. Even with the perfect diet, it can be hard to get the key nutrients we need every single day. And that's where Ritual comes in. It fills in those gaps in my diet. So too easy to take capsules, provide nine high quality nutrients, and there's no shady additives or fillers or colorants in them. And I like that because then I feel like I, I feel good about what I'm putting into my body, you know, especially at this point where I'm pregnant, that's something I'm hyper aware of, what I'm eating, what I'm taking, and so I feel really good about that. And it's funny, when I would look through forums of what people are taking for their prenatal vitamins, pretty much everyone takes Ritual, like, literally, it was like comment after comment on like three different baby pregnancy forums I'm just a part of. Literally, almost everyone is taking Ritual because when you start doing the research, I have found that this really is the best one out there. But I also really like the transparency Ritual shares with everyone. If you go on their website, you can see exactly what ingredients are in any of their vitamins. You can see where they were sourced from. You can see why the different ingredients are in there, what they're supposed to be doing for you. Plus, I love that because this is a subscription that you're getting mailed to your house. They use 100% recycled materials. They use plant-based fiber to build their mailers. I just, again, across the board, I love this brand. I just love it. So Ritual is an obsessively researched multivitamin and it contains nine high quality essential nutrients your body needs from D3s to omega-3s. So of course the prenatal has different things in it than the essential for women, which is good because your body needs different things if you're pregnant versus when you're not. So I always recommend if you're thinking about checking it out, go to their site and really look around at what they offer and what's in them. I think, <laughs> I think you'll be pretty quickly convinced like I was that this is a very different multivitamin, different than a lot of what's out there. Plus they have a delayed release capsule design, which can be really gentle on an empty stomach, which I appreciate. And depending on which one you get, like the essential for women has a mint tab in each bottle. So the vitamins stay smelling really fresh in the prenatal. I think it's more of like a citrus 
tab in there, which I love. They must have known because the mint kind of makes me feel sick being pregnant, but the citrus is perfect. <laughs> but they're also vegan friendly, non-GMO, gluten free, allergen friendly, and have no added sugar. <laughs> So in addition to their prenatal vitamins and their essential for women, they also have a men's one. They have a postnatal one, which I'll be taking after I give birth. And they also have a 50 plus vitamin and a teen vitamin. So you can really cover a lot of the members of your household and you can feel really good about what they're going to be taking and putting into their body. Plus it's delivered to your door, it's a subscription. So it's basically breaks down to only a dollar a day to get nine high quality nutrients your body needs delivered to your door. It is so easy and the website's really easy if you need to like skip a month or if you need to add something else on, it's really easy to navigate and change things. And I also take their essential protein. They have beyond vitamins, they have like their protein powders and they actually have a pre and postnatal protein powder I use as often as I can. We'll throw it in our green smoothies. I'll have it alone just with almond milk like shaked up, but I also will just mix it with almond milk and shake it up and have it that way too. So another thing you could possibly be getting from Ritual that's really awesome for you. So I wanted to mention it because it is something I like use and enjoy and yeah. Plus in a clinical study, their essential for women was shown to increase vitamin D levels over 12 weeks, which I think is really cool. So obviously better health doesn't just happen overnight. So Ritual is offering you guys 10% off your first three months. So you can fill in the gaps in your diet with their essential for women. If you are pregnant, you can take their prenatal. If you're just postpartum, just switch to their postnatal. If you've got a man in the house, get the men's vitamin. That's what Tyler takes. So you can get 10% off your first three months by going to ritual.com slash jbron10 and using my code jbron10 at checkout. Thank you so much, Ritual, for sponsoring this portion of the video. And thank you also for making a really good prenatal because I feel really good about what I'm taking. All right, so diving into the goals. So I just rewatched my, uh, while well, I was reheating my coffee, I was kind of skimming through, but just rewatched my last last year goals video 2021 I'll link it below if you want to see it it's amazing how little has changed but also how much has changed so I want to share the big things that changed for me this past year things I changed I just changed way too many times but things I adjusted <laughs> to make my life easier and I'm excited. So thinking through this, I was like, oh my gosh, we did a lot in 2021. So first of all, I set a reading goal of 30 books and I met my goal. I met my goal, man, and it was awesome. And I now I've read 30 amazing books. I know a lot of you guys are readers and a lot of you guys are not. I have to admit, I feel like I was a reader growing up. Then once I went to college and into adulthood, I just, when did I have the time to read, right? Like when does anyone have the time to read? So once I finally broke down and got a Kindle, and I say broke down because I am very romantic about books and I like physical books. I finally broke down, got a Kindle. It changed everything for me because suddenly I could read at night when I couldn't sleep. I could read before bed and I wasn't like having my light on and keeping my husband Tyler awake. You know what I mean? Suddenly I was able to read 30 books in a year because guess what? I don't have any other time during the day to read. It's not happening any other time. It is only before bed and I read 30 books and I'm not a super fast reader. So I just, I want to give you that inspiration to know that you don't have to be a crazy fast reader and have time during the day to read. You can just do it at night. It might be time to break down and get that Kindle. I just rent books from the library on my Kindle. You can use an app called Libby. I think that works with most libraries. And so I haven't paid for like any books. <laughs> It's amazing, you guys. It really, really is. So wanted to share that tidbit of how that happened for me because I feel like a lot of people, I know me, I would hear like, someone read that many books in a year? Like, what do they just like read all the day? Where do they find the time? You'd be amazed at how much you can read by just reading 10 or 15 pages a night. And what's kind of amazing is I've been sleeping really well because I'll read it and then I'll find, I'll feel myself drifting off and then I'll just turn it off, set on my nightstand and I'm asleep in like a minute. It's awesome, you guys. So one big change I made this year was hiring help for various things in my life, especially with work. I've finally gotten to a point where I'm like, I was trying to juggle every single piece of this job. And I know that a lot of you guys look at YouTube and you think, okay, Jessica, really, how hard is it? You're filming a video, you're editing it. You can do it in the comfort of your home if you want. Like, I know that. And I would probably think the same thing if I weren't doing this. But there are a lot of pieces to the job that, you know, if I'm not working five full days a week. So some changes we made was one, we found a separate workspace to work out of. Both my husband and I, he has his own travel agency, but he also has his YouTube channel. So having that separate space has been the biggest game changer for us ever. And I was very 
Tyler really had to convince me to do it because I like being at home. And obviously today I'm filming at home. I switch it up. But having that dedicated space for all of our stuff, all of our equipment, our computers, you know, all of that. But on top of that, the dedicated space where it's always set up and I can sit down and it's the lights and everything are ready to film is amazing. But also just being able to separate work from home. Because the problem was we were just home all day. And I know a lot of us experience this just with the pandemic in general, working from home, you start to realize after a while, like, I need to get out of this house. There is no separation. You feel like work never ends and you can't really enjoy your house because now it feels like work. And so the lines were very blurred. And so now it's very nice to have more of a black and white line between work and home. It's been amazing, you guys. It really, really has been. So I'm so glad it's one of the best decisions we ever made. But I also hired an editor this year to help with my videos. That has been a huge game changer because now I feel like I can actually keep up with my emails and all of those other like, you know, tax things that would fall behind and then I'd be working on the weekend trying to catch up and all of those behind the scenes things. And then on top of it, I feel like I can really devote time to planning and filming my videos and not feeling rushed because I'm like, oh gosh, I gotta get this done because I gotta edit it today too, you know? That has been awesome. And then I also hired, I haven't really talked about this, someone to edit my videos for Facebook. It's a company that does this and I was very skeptical at first and they're doing an amazing job because basically they edit videos I've already done to make more sense on Facebook. To kind of with, you know, most of the videos you see on Facebook are more like square shaped and they'll have captions like just popping all over the screen and they do a great job with that. So that I'm really glad I decided to do as well. So some goals from last year that I feel like I still need to work on and then we're gonna get into my like goal goals for the year. I need to still work on unplugging and like leaving my phone in the other room. So like when it's evening time and we're like eating dinner or whatever, I still will grab my phone and just have it next to me. There's no reason it's there. No one's calling me that, you know, that's that necessary. I don't need to be checking Instagram or YouTube or whatever, but I still just have it there. And so I think the simple action of leaving it behind is something I really need to work on. I know a lot of you guys are probably nodding your head because you're like, oh my gosh, same Jessica. So I just feel like we could probably all work on not feeling that we need that phone physically near us at all times. Like I get anxious when it's not, it's awful. Another thing I mentioned last year was finding a morning routine that works. I still really haven't. I think I'm finally resigning to the fact, at least at this season in my life, that a, a true routine that happens every day is just not gonna happen. It's just not. There are certain things that don't change, you know? We always get our coffee and we bring it back up to the bedroom and sit in bed for a few minutes. Sometimes it's just the two of us and we can talk. Sometimes my toddler's in there, you know, that it just changes. So there are certain things that always stay the same, but I think the idea of me being like, okay, and then I'll read my devotional for five minutes and then I'll, it's just, it's not in the cards at this point in my life. But I think resigning to that and knowing it is kind of nice because then I don't feel like I have to battle every morning thinking I should be doing this X, Y, and Z. Plus knowing that I'm having a baby in a few months and everything's gonna be thrown out the window anyway, at least for a while, any kind of routine, you know? So I'm trying to be very flexible. Maybe that's it. This year I'm trying to be very flexible with my routines so that I don't feel like I have to stick with one certain way of doing things. I also wanted to do monthly fitness challenges every month. So one month it might be, okay, for March, I want to work out four times a week. And then in May, I want to go on a walk every single day, I don't know. That kind of fell out the window once I got pregnant because I had nausea and all, you know, all kinds of stuff in the first trimester. This year, I'm one of my big goals is something fitness e related, and I'll explain that in a second. So a monthly fitness challenge may come back into play towards the latter half of the year, we will see. And then Instagram reels and TikToks, forever the thorn in my side. That is something I just still cannot seem to feel inspiration on what in the heck to make for those. Like I always feel like I'm not the type of person that does that, and I can't explain it. Do you guys know what I mean? Like. I watch all these other YouTubers and they're so good at it. And I'm like, I just feel like I'm not good at it. Like, I don't know what to film about. How do people come up with ideas? I have no problem with doing this on YouTube, but for some reason I always feel stunted with Instagram Reels and TikTok. So it's still on my to-do list. I have done some on both channels. It's at It's Jessica Braun on both TikTok and Instagram. I have done some and I definitely wanna breathe more life into that, but I really have gotta figure out a way to like feel more comfortable. And even making some of them, I feel, I do feel more comfortable, but like I said, I just feel like I'm interjecting myself in a space that I don't belong. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. Okay, now time for my official 2022 goals. And a lot of these are not quantifiable. They're not something I can say, yes, that month I did this four times a week and that 
These are very general, but also specific. And I hope some of these will spark something in you and inspire you to maybe try one of these. So one big change that I've already started doing is the idea of everything in your home having a place and only handling things once. So everything in your home having a place makes sense, but really thinking about what are those things like in your home that you feel like always need to be picked up? Is it shoes? Is it coats? Is it a book bag or your purse? That is definitely something that for me, I there are a few items I'm like, I need to have a hook for this bag because this bag always ends up all over the house and every single day after work, I'm moving it around. But the other piece of that is the idea of only handle things once. So when I come in from work, for example, if I've got my coat on and I've got my shoes on in a bag, instead of like setting my purse down on the kitchen island and then taking my shoes off right there and taking my coat off and throwing it there, and then 10 minutes later being like, oh, I gotta go move my shoes. So then I move my shoes and then I'm like, oh, I need to hang up my coat. So then I, I've already handled each of these items twice at this point. When I could have come in, take my bag off, hang it on whatever hook I end up hanging up, hang my coat up right away, take my shoes off and put them away right away. Then I'm handling everything once and then I'm not tidying up 10 minutes after I get home, stuff that could have been tidied up right away. You know what I mean? It seems so simple, but this phrase, this mantra of handling everything once has been replaying in my head constantly all day long. And it's so cool that it's so quickly transforming the way that I just handle the stuff in my life. And obviously that's a very specific example, but I think it can apply to a lot of different things. So I wanted to mention that here. I mentioned it in that coffee chat video I mentioned too. And it's just such a game changer mentally for me. And so my husband's kind of been doing it too. And our house has suddenly been even more tidy. And that that is just amazing. So another goal I have is to take a walk every single day. I can say that and we're in the middle of winter right now. And some days obviously it's gonna be below zero and it's just not an option but generally trying to go on a walk every single day. It's good for my dog, it's good for me, good for my husband, good for my kid, and eventually kids. We have noticed such a change, like when everything happened in 2020 and into 2021, walks were one of the best sources of happiness for all of us. We could get out of the house, we could get fresh air, it's good for you, but I think it's really good for you mentally. And there are a lot of studies, if you dive into research, there's a lot of studies in how walking can be really good for your mental health. I have struggled with mental health things in the past, and that is one thing that did provide some relief. Medicine also provided relief, but it really was a wonderful tool. And so knowing that I'm heading into having this baby and the postpartum period where I did have postpartum depression before, making walking a habit every single day, I think will be a really good thing. So we've been doing pretty good about that. When the holidays were around, that was definitely a tricky time to fit in walks because you're just generally busy. But uh, really trying to make that a priority during the day, I think will be good for all of us. But on that same note, one and maybe my biggest goal this year, it's time for me to shake off my all or nothing perfectionist mentality. I had never taken the term perfectionist and applied it to my all or nothing mentality. I'll explain all of this until like last month, one of you guys commented like, Jess, that's called perfectionism. I've always known I was kind of a perfectionist with some things, but I'd never really thought about how, for example, the way I connected it to my life was, if I say, if I set a goal, like I'm gonna work out five days a week and I don't meet that goal, if I only work out three days one week, but then the next week I do do five days, but then the next week after that I only do two days or three days, I would get to this point mentally where I'm like, if I can't even meet the five days a week, then I'm just not even gonna try, what's the point? And <laughs> while that sounds really negative, that really is how my mind works. So if I'm like, well, if I'm not doing it perfectly five days a week, then why even try? What's the point of even doing this week? Or with like healthier eating, if I'm like, well, I've already eaten three Christmas cookies today, so, yeah, I could eat this apple too, but what's the point? I've already eaten three cookies. I'm just gonna go eat chips. Like <laughs> That is how my all or nothing mind works. And putting the label of perfectionism on that really shook it up for me. And I was like, oh, that is what that is. And so really thinking like, no, Jessica, just because you didn't work out at all last week and you are gonna try to do a run this week, it doesn't mean that just because I didn't work out at all last week that the run I might, I'm thinking about doing today won't be awesome for me. I hope that makes sense to some of you. I, I don't know how better to explain that, but I, it's time for me to shake that off because it, it's not helping me, it's only hindering me, and every little bit I can do, whether it's fitness stuff, whether it's eating healthier, whether it's spending more time with my kids, 
reading more. Just because I'm not meeting some certain goal doesn't mean I can't keep striving towards that goal. And every little bit I do towards those goals is good for me. So I hope that made sense. <laughs> Another thing I've been thinking about is leaving the guilt that I feel for taking time for myself. I'm leaving that in the past. I'm done with that. And for me, it's kind of like mom guilt, wife guilt, just, I don't know. Because I'm definitely at a point in my life where when I don't spend time with my toddler and I'm like, I need 30 minutes, I just wanna fold these clothes in peace, okay? I don't, <laughs> I don't want a toddler pulling at my ankle, like, come play with me when I've just played with her for an hour. And I still will be like, Tyler, I need 30 minutes, you know, to just fold these clothes, whatever. It's not even real me time. I'm still folding freaking laundry, but for me, folding laundry is cathartic. That's my own thing. Okay. I would still, I'd be folding those clothes and maybe like watching an episode of something and feeling guilty that I'm not playing with her. But I'm like, Jessica, you play with your child. Like you take care of her, you love her. She knows she's loved. I have to stop feeling guilty about taking some time for myself. And I always get into this mindset of like, well, but I work four days a week and I'm not with her then, so why can't I spend all of the other time when I'm not working with her? But I'm like, well, Jessica, you're also trying to keep a household together and cook and clean and do laundry and be a good wife and be a good mom. Like, there's so many hats that we all wear and that you don't have to be a mom or a parent to feel this. There are so many hats that we all wear all of the time that I'm done feeling guilty about taking time just for myself when I need it. That may sound selfish, but you know, sometimes my me time is a spiritual thing. I wanna just sit and read a devotional for 10 minutes. I just wanna sit and work out for 20 minutes. I guess I wouldn't be sitting. You know what I mean? Maybe I would be. So another goal, these, I told you, these are kind of like big goals, is to ask for help when I need it. I know that with postpartum period coming up. When I know that I, I'm trying to ha you know, hold it all together and make sure I've covered everything and that the house is still clean, I need to let go of that and be willing to accept help and to ask for help when I need it. Again, it kind of ties into that guilt thing where I would feel like, well, you know, again, I'm a mom, why can't I handle all this? It's like, well, we don't have to be able to handle all this. We have support systems around us that we can reach out and ask for help. So. I think, again, connected to that guilt thing, I just need to be more willing to be vulnerable in that way and show that I don't always have it together. And quite frankly, that we don't, like anyone, we don't always have to have it together. And we should be allowed to ask for help without feeling, again, that kind of shame of, boy, I couldn't handle this on my own, you know? I'm clearly going through a lot. <laughs> my hormones and emotions are just so high right now, and I also know what I'm facing down in a few months. And so really thinking about how I went through it last time, the postpartum period, and how I wanna go through it this time, I think that's why a lot of these goals are kind of related to that. But I think they could be removed and related to a lot of different parts of your life. But of course, a lot of my examples are related to that because it's just on my mind. So one other thing I wanna be better about is that a lot of studies have shown that the morning time is our most focused times. Like with our brain and just the way we operate, it really is the best time to do more detail-oriented tasks, tasks that are really important, that you need the best mental energy that you have, the morning really is ideal for that. So like once I get into work, really making sure that the first hour or two that I'm there, that I'm focusing on those things that need the most attention and the most focus. So that is something that's a really easy thing to change that I really haven't been good about. Like when I get there, filming is something I enjoy. I don't need a lot of focused energy. I mean, I do, but it's something I enjoy that I can do in the afternoon when I'm feeling a little bit tired because it, it peps me up, right? I love doing it. But a lot of times I'll film first when really that should be the time I'm using to do the more tax-like things and the things that really do take a lot of that mental focus. So really think about your day, whether you go to work or maybe you're a stay-at-home parent, whatever. Really think about what can you get done in the morning time when you have that mental energy that those other tasks could maybe be pushed to the afternoon, like doing dishes or doing laundry or whatever it is. Speaking of the kitchen though, I want to start running our dishwasher every night. We are at the point now, and it's only gonna get crazier once this other baby gets here, that we pretty much fill our dishwasher every day because we, you know, we're not home every day, but usually someone is here. We have, you know, grandparents that are sometimes watching her over here. So dishes are getting used and put in the dishwasher. 
And we now finally have a dishwasher that's more high efficiency, so it doesn't use as much water as like our old dishwasher did. So a lot of times it'll be mostly full at night, but we're like, well, we can fit like two or three more things. So then it'll be running in the middle of the day. So then dishes that we're using during the day are piling up in the sink because the dishwasher's running. Whereas if we just run the dishwasher every night, because it's typically mostly full, then in the morning first thing, they can get put away and then we're able to put the dishes in. Because one of our biggest problems with tidying and keeping our house clean are the dishes. Because we do like to cook, oh my gosh, we go through so many dishes, you guys. Like, it's just crazy. In a day, I'm like, how? How are there this many dishes again? And so just the idea that instead of letting them stack up, being able to load the dishwasher right away as we're using the dishes, that will really ease a lot of the stress that ends up getting pushed to the end of the night when we're tired and we don't feel like doing dishes, but we kind of need to, or else we're waking up to a messy kitchen and the cycle goes on and on and on. So that is a goal that I think we can totally do. We just need to make it a habit that we start and keep up with, you know? Another thing I wanna be better about is reserving time for time off. So this is kind of my job specific. I know a lot of jobs, like when I used to teach, obviously the time off you get is the time off you get. You get summer break, winter break, whatever. In this job, I will work 52 weeks a year if I had my way. I just continue doing my thing because I'm like, well, yeah, that's just what I do. I enjoy doing it. But I've also really felt earlier this year, that burnout feeling, the physical toll and mental toll that it can take on you when you're doing any job, basically nonstop. And so really recognizing that I need to reserve time off. So I do a lot of like annual contracts with sponsors and that is amazing. But as I was looking at annual contracts for this year from some brands that I've worked with for years, I'm like, okay, I need to reserve time where I'm not expected to have a sponsored video in there. And so it's been nice. A lot of my contracts I've worked in time off basically, because for me, when it's not a sponsored video, I'm able obviously to film and upload whenever I want. But with companies, you do have certain deadlines and certain times in the month, they need the video live. And so that does affect when I can feasibly take time off, whether it's just to spend time with family or whether it's to travel, whatever. So I've been a lot better about working that into contracts like, okay, these few months, like especially the postpartum period, those few months, no sponsorships because I'm like, I'm not, I don't need that extra stress on top of it. Another issue I had was if I were going to travel, we do travel a decent amount, I would pre-film videos so that I wouldn't miss any uploads. And while I do think I'm still gonna do that for some of the times we travel when I can, I do wanna have some times where we travel and I don't stress about that. And I just take the week off from YouTube, right? Like, and so it's, it's kind of funny. That was like a revelation I had. I'm like, duh, Jess, you could just not upload a few videos and you would be fine. Like nothing would, nothing bad will happen. I will be okay. So that is something I'm trying to be very conscious of this year. This is a long video. I know, I'm sorry guys. I mentioned my reading goal and how I had 30 books as my reading goal. I don't know what to do with my reading goal this year because like I said, I'm having this baby. It's gonna change. My nights are not gonna be normal for a very long time. And I know what that's like. So I'm like, so do I, I wanna still have a reading goal, but do I lower it? I certainly don't think I should raise it above 30 because 30 was still a challenge for me. I did it, but it was still a challenge. So I'm like, do I lower it to like 20 or 25, knowing that my nights are not gonna be normal, you know, and that is my only reading time. So let me know your thoughts. What would you do in my situation? It's not that deep. I mean, it's just a goal, but I do, I have my like Goodreads account. It is private. A lot of you guys have asked. I, I like keeping some parts of my life private. So my Goodreads account is not one I'm sharing on here, but you can set your like yearly goal on there. And so it's fun to see how you're doing. And it'll even tell you like, hey, you're a book behind at this point in the year, or hey, you're a book ahead. So I like setting it on there. So it's kind of set in stone for me and I can work towards it. And that's why I'm like, I really do want to have the number and put it in there. So kind of leaning towards 20. And then if I go above it, that's great. But then I think that's Still will be a challenge-ish this year, but still doable, you know? Those are my goals. I'm sure I'll think of like 15 more in the next few weeks and you know, it is what it is. But I love sharing these with you. And like I said, just kind of putting it out into the universe of like, this is what I'm working on. I hope it inspired you to think of something you want to change or adjust in your life or in your routines or habits, whatever. I wanna hear what your top three goals for the year are. What are three things you're either working on or working to change? Let me know below because you might inspire me and I might add some more to my little list here. But oh, it's a new year, you guys. It's just, it's a good feeling. Also, I wanna give you a little silver lining here. If you are someone that like during, if it's winter where you live, it's winter where I live right now, and 
one thing I think about a lot is, you know, like seasonal affective disorder and all that. And it's just hard. Like when the days are super gray and the gray days stretch into more gray days and it's just cold and, it, you know, the sun is setting earlier. One little silver lining I've been thinking about the past few years and it's really helped me mentally get through the gray days of winter is that the shortest day of the year is December 21st where we live in the Northern Hemisphere. That means from that day on, the days get longer. So December 22nd, the, the sun sets a little bit later and the sun sets a little bit later on the 23rd and the 24th. So now looking down January and February, each day, even though you may not be seeing the sun, each day is technically getting longer. And so it's one way that I've been looking at it that's kind of helped like, actually this isn't as bad because in theory the days were shorter in December, you know what I mean? So it's just kind of one mindset shift that might help you. I also would recommend a happy lamp because they really help me. There are a million brands on Amazon, but it's basically like, something that mimics the sun and you can just have it on for a little bit of your day at your desk. They're inexpensive and I really do feel like it's made a difference and even if it's something that's just psychosomatic, I don't care because it works. So <laughs> there you go. Anyway, I love you guys so much. Again, if you want to try out Ritual, you can get 10% off your first three months by going to ritual.com slash jbron10 and entering code jbron10 at checkout. I will have the link and everything right at the top of the description box if you want to try their vitamins. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. I have loved them for years. And like I said, my husband loves them too. Thank you again, Ritual, for sponsoring a portion of this video. And thank you again if you want to subscribe to my channel and catch more of my videos I have coming up. I would love that. I'm currently amidst doing my Jammy Awards, which is basically my series of the best of 2021. I'm doing doing makeup, I'm doing some like lifestyle-y, like clothing, home, kitchen stuff. And I've also done an Amazon favorites for the year. That video went up in December. So I'll link that if you wanna see my favorites from Amazon for 2021. That video was so much fun to film. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. This was a long one, I know. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.